February monthly public safety meeting. Mr. Chin, David Marks, from the North Carolina for Neighborhood Council, Captain Fine, Teddy Moore, Teddy Burns. Hi, so um, Lieutenant Wilson couldn't make it in tonight. He's not feeling well, uh, but he sent us a regards to the vote. And uh, Officer Boyle handed out the crime stats for uh, the month. And um, we had a little uptick in breaking and enterings from the last uh, from last year this month. Um, and other than that, nothing really uh, significant. 127 moving violations, 224 parking citations for the time period. But I'll talk about all the individual crimes, part one crimes that we have in the district. Now the first breaking and entering was on um, January 23rd at 166 Salem Street. And that was a call. The call originally came in for vandalism for a 40-year-old black male wearing dark clothing who was yelling and screaming outside of the above. And an officer responded. And um, they had a conversation with them. He claimed his girlfriend lived there. We weren't able to verify that. And um, he, he was actually observed by uh, someone in the neighborhood kicking the interior front door open and breaking it. And so uh, he was arrested for breaking and entering in the nighttime, malicious destruction of property, and being a disorderly person. And that individual is uh, he's from Dorchester, not uh, local. And the uh, next breaking and entering was at 28 Fleet Street. This was on January 24th at 2.47 a.m. And the uh, victim, a female, young female, called and said that um, an individual tried to enter. She heard, heard a noise when she's in the apartment and heard uh, a noise and someone entered the, uh, from a fire escape to the ground floor to the building. And then they came into the kitchen window, which was uh, completely open. So, um, the guy took off, kind of was scared off. Um, a few minutes later, tried to come to another window and they scared him off. So, you know, don't know kind of what was going on there if he's kind of one of these drunken party boy types or, or what, but it was just a little unusual in coming back, obviously. And, and there was a, um, you know, roommates were present with, with, the, with the woman as well. She didn't have a contact, and so she wasn't able to identify, get the look of the suspect, unfortunately. Um, but all the windows were closed, they weren't locked, and um, you know, we talked to the victims about making sure the windows were secure. Um, and that suspect was a white, non Hispanic male. Uh, no other description of that particular time. And then the following night, on January 25th at 2.05 a.m., this was at 20 Bartlett Place, a uh, male victim reported that a white male around 25 years old with a mustache and black hair tried to enter his window, and this was at 2.05 a.m., and then uh, tried to get in, he, he banged on the window, and the guy ran off. Um, there were no past break-ins there, and you know, we don't know if those were related or what, but there's been no incidents since um, those two particular incidents. Now, last break-in was at Cafe uh, Little Italy at 178 Salem Street. And uh, the window was smashed with a tire iron inside, and it appeared that the cash register and cash box were taken from an under the counter area. Unknown how much money was taken at this time, and the detectives are, are also following up uh, on this particular case. And for uh, auto thefts, there were two. The first happened on January 25th, and it was uh, reported at. Um, at 106 Fulton Street, and this was a 2016 Porsche that was stolen. And the second auto theft was on January 24th at uh, 1 Richmond Street, and that was a Honda Pilot, 2015 Honda Pilot that was stolen. And, um, and we had a car report stolen, um, it was uh, last month, but it was actually this pocket, and that does happen to me. They pocket, pocket. They think they park it more than the spot. They go back and try to find it. It's gone, it's stolen. We call the tow line, it wasn't towed. Um, and, and a lot of these cars are newer. The newer cars have the chip and the key, and it's virtually impossible to steal the car without towing it or having the key. And assuming that people have the key, then uh, you know, a lot of times they, they mispark the car, so you know, they try to drink it. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Um, and there were two larcenies, not counting the auto thefts during this time period. One was at 7 Stillman Street, 
and this was a uh, handbag stolen um, from uh, her car, and inside was a uh, credit cards, cash, $100 in cash, and some uh, personal papers and things of that sort in the car. And the second theft occurred was a uh, pickpocketing at uh, the CVS at 218 Hanover Street, and a cell phone was taken in that particular incident, Samsung Galaxy cell phone. And for arrests during this time period, there were two just. Uh, one was the 166 Salem Street incident with, with, for the attempted break-in, and the second was an assault and battery at 452 Hanover Street, and that was a domestic violence incident, and um, the suspect in that case uh, was arrested, and he was charged with um, assault and battery, 209A domestic violence. And that, that covers it for the part one crimes. Traditionally, in the winter months, things slow down a bit, which is what we like. Um, the only other things that we've had really major going on besides the snow has been uh, the Super Bowl. In the evening of the Super Bowl, you know, we expect, um, you know, uh, obviously if it's the Patriot win, which they did, we expect a lot of Drew celebration, which is great, but uh, sometimes some of the kids have that too. So we had a, a lot of extra help that night working on. And uh, down here from the north end, it was nice and quiet. They weren't really probably any complaints at all. Uh, the, the vocal spot downtown was the Boston Common, which was kind of unusual because we usually have the Emerson and Suffolk up there, but this year through social media, uh, they were kind of texting each other and, and all the kids wound up from the south end down in the Boston Common. We had up to 2,000 kids in the uh, Boston Common. Turns out, you know, they were, they were peaceful, they were just kind of celebrating, nobody was hurt, and then they yelled and screamed for a while, and, um, and then they left and went back down to Wilson Street. Um, and that turned out fine. There were no, there were no, um, no arrests, no, uh, no issues or any sort of that. And then we had the parade. Uh, well, actually, that was the Super Bowl, and, and that, that was on Sunday. Uh, Monday, we had snow. Tuesday was the evening of the traffic jam downtown. That was widely reported. Anybody who was driving that night knows. What was that, though? Well, downtown, the two major Point, the two major bottlenecks downtown was the Mass General and the Fleet Center. So the Mass General, people that missed hospital appointments for two days, dialysis, chemotherapy, obstetricians, whatever it was, all those appointments were missed, and everybody was trying to jam in and out of the Mass General, Fleet Street, the garage. It was taking people two hours to get out of the garage because of the just the volume of people. And then that was back at Cambridge Street, both ways, which was backing up. Stirl Drive, Lever Circle, and then that kind of led down to Stanford Street, down to North Station, and that caused uh, traffic. We had a bean pot at the Fleet Center, and that was a, a five o'clock thing, and then that backed up a lot of traffic coming to town. So, and then where this, there was still a lot of snow that hadn't been removed from some of the intersections, it was it was uh, very problematic. So, uh, we we uh, just pulled the officers in from um, other parts of the city. And we had officers uh, on all the time that we had added all the key intersections to keep the traffic from getting gridlocked. We also worked with the state police to help pull the traffic. It took a little while, but we were able to alleviate the traffic. Big things by seven o'clock was okay, which you know, all things considered, wasn't bad. And then, uh, then we went into the Super Bowl parade on Wednesday, and the parade, you know, went fine. We had, you know, our, our real major concern was just safety of people, the crowds, and you know pedestrians and with the snow and the ice and and you know typically there's always like that terrorism threat there was no intelligence that would be any terrorism type of event or anything but kind of we just always vigilant to get out the marathon and um, so we, it was a, it was a public safety thing we wanted to make sure that no machines were um, pedestrians and kids and there were a few arrests um, some kids threw a ice ball police officer hit in the head that guy was arrested um, another kid was urinating kind of in the public, he was arrested. So there was a couple of kind of that type of stuff going on. A little alcohol he had consumed. There was some uh, public drinking for us as well. But overall, given the number of people, you know, it was, it was, it was, a, it was a good time. The fans uh, had a great time. And it was a nice event. Uh, there were no, like, injuries from any, you know, any incidents, uh, which, was, which was good. 
just you know minor stuff here and there. Well, all in all, that that ended very well. So, um, and then yesterday night after the parade, uh, we had additional traffic officers as well. And it turns out that I think everybody was scared off from the night before. There was less traffic than a normal rush hour, so that was that worked out great. So we had one tough night of traffic. And everything else was okay, considering we had the Super Bowl and then the parade and the snowstorm. We had more snow in the last week than we had, I think, probably ever in the history of time. Right? It was like 35 inches in, in one week period, and the past record was like 32 inches or something. And, and I remember, like, then, like it was a 78, the city was shut down for like two weeks. You know? And, and I, I was a kid at the time, but I remember, I remember the cops riding around with the guys in the EPW trucks, because that was the only way you can get around was in a giant truck. You couldn't try to it was more like three Right, yeah. In the neighborhoods, right, on the main drags. And so I think, you know, all in all, it's been, you know, okay considering the we had it's been to the top of it. Um, we have police officers out tonight with the DPW, with, uh, just one of the police officers having to lose the lights on uh, the safety of the DPWs. And uh, other than that, the North End has been quiet. Kids have been uh, behaving themselves. Teddy, you haven't had any complaints from the end? No, that's a good time yesterday. Yeah. And, and so, you know, Jim, I think it's cold steady. It's been from Jim's first so. Too cold. <laughs> the weather helps a lot. The weather helps, yeah. yeah. Seven, I mean, overall, the district crime is down like 40%. We're only really talking a month, so the stats are just, you know, it's obviously looking really here. There's just so little going on because everybody's barricaded in the house because of the weather. Which I'll take, I'll take it from the crime standpoint. <laughs> so Sunday night up the third floor closed. Yeah, the third floor. Yeah, sure. The bars. The bars were. Yeah, we had a conversation with all the bars to. They weren't permitted to admit anybody at the third floor. But everybody, like, really, we checked at five five thirty before the uh, an hour before kickoff. Like, we, we checked the bars. So, uh, particularly North Station Freedom Hall, but also North End and, and the other sports bars downtown to see what kind of the uh, crowds are like. Because if they're not in there, probably a little before kickoff, you know. And I, everybody's at home watching the you know 70-inch LED whatever TVs nowadays. So you know, and then with the clothing and everything else, you know, a lot of people just stay home. So you know, overall, you know, it was uh, it was a really help. The weather helped out. Things went smooth. Um, so that's all I have on the police side. Are there any questions or um, concerns and issues in the neighborhood? And Sal's office I think is feeling a lot of calls that we're just working on. Everybody's working hard to get everything cleared out. I think we're working together as best we can. And we're working Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the key. People in the neighborhood are working with the city just to try to identify the problem that we need and try to prioritize the things that No deaths. No deaths. Yeah, no deaths. And, and uh, you know, during this time of year, for the homeless situation, typically, you know, we have a lot of concerns with the homeless with cold and frostbite, and we unfortunately we have that from time to time. The homeless people uh, freeze, you know, freezing, literally freezing. And, and Teddy, uh, working with our uh, street outreach team, Officer Alice Alloway, they did a uh, a outreach to the homeless. Started, we did three nights today, right, from like four o'clock in the morning and on, uh, along with the outreach uh, person uh, who turned into somebody who was shelter. Yeah, that went to the shelters. So, nonprofit services uh, went pretty well. But the thing about it was, it's a lot of young kids. And they're all 19, 23, 24 from the suburbs. You know, the parents threw them out. Eventually, the town draws them out because they don't want to be them. They don't want to us. <coughs> but, but not in the North End, though, right? Few no, no, there's no big deal. We did them out of the end. It was in Cambridge uh, uh, Street, uh, that's on Washtown Town Cross in the Big Town, Johnson Street, and uh, the garage over at the Bubble uh, Garage, North Station, North Station. And, and so uh, the um, Bay Cove Center opened up a night, a uh, night shelter on Orange Street. So
so they have a capacity of about 65 or 70 people. They don't have sleeping facilities, but you know, they can, they can go and warm up, get a cup of coffee, take a shower, get a meal, charge up their phones or whatever, and um, they, they get about 65 people a night, so that's actually been a great resource. They open up January 5th, and uh, that's helped get some people off the street. And so we are seeing far, far fewer people on the street. Uh, now, and then the days of the storm, um, they found places to, to get shelter, so you know, we haven't had any deaths, we haven't had any injuries that were aware of. So I thought that just kind of keeps up and you know, get the whole thing moving. It's very good. Yeah. Just so interesting. <clears throat> just use caution when you're walking around because of all these huge snow banks. Uh, drivers can't see you, so they come around the corner. Yeah, nice. Yeah, that was an issue this morning over on Congress Street. There was a five-story building with giant icicles on top of their frolics, so and we had to shut down the sidewalk area just so that we could get hit with falling icicles until the crews could come up and clean it up. So. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, it will warm up and we won't have anything going on. And <laughs> Spring will be here soon. A few more weeks, right? Oh. It stays lighter long, not changing. Mm -hmm. We had a good, we had a good spring going November, December. The end, we just the end, we get killed. So, yeah, hopefully, that will be it. Another storm coming this weekend. Yeah, that's what we're seeing. Yeah, we're seeing the storm coming this weekend. Okay. The annual killings and trip, uh, District 1, uh, the panel sponsored, you take about 70 kids up on the weekend, March 20th, we're heading up to Killington. It's an annual trip, it's a great time. And today the kids had a uh, police appreciation day, uh, came to that, it was uh, pretty good. And all the kids, you know, some nice cars and stuff, so it was good. And then, uh,